Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> so, we're in sunny Miami here now these days. So, yesterday I posted a story, and that post story was, what's one thing you would really want to know about, like, you know, anything, trading, whatever. You're talking about trading strategy you're not talking about you know where you take like a you know like a 50 pip trade or 100 pip trade or a 200 pip trade but basically what, what you're looking at is you're looking at three things now the one thing is you're choosing which session are you going to trade right which session are you most comfortable with you trading right and that also depends on like you know the amount of time you have in your life like let's say if you're a morning person you're up early in the morning your work starts at 10 a.m 11 a.m whatever like you know if you're privilege that way in terms of work, then you can say, okay, you know what, I'm going to look at three New York, three New York open. And the biggest reason why you're only going to focus on that in like one session is so that you can totally understand how that session's moving. Because if you're trading London session and then New York session, and then you're like, okay, you know what, I'm free in the evening time, so I'm going to trade Asian session, that shit's not going to work. It's definitely not going to work because you're going to be confused. Number second thing is choosing a currency pick, anything. You know, you can choose indices, you can choose, you know, gold, you can choose pound yen, pound USD. Um, and it also depends on what session you're trading. You're trading a London session, you're looking at pound, euro, you're looking at Swiss, you're looking at, let's say, New York, you're mostly looking at pairs tied with the dollar because there's really high volume in, like, you know, London and New York overlap. So you're looking at the session time, what time suits you best, personally, one pair that you're gonna choose, and how many trades are you going to take in a day? And like, you know, you guys heard me say all the time, just focus on one or two trades a day and that's it. That's it. That's easier said than done. But a lot of fucking people can't do that. You know, you can take two trades and you're like, okay, you know what, out my $500 account, I made 10 bucks, I want to make 2,000 tomorrow. So no, two trades aren't enough. You're going to take five trades, and six trades, and seven trades. And, and then you're gonna like, you know, spiral into that losing mentality, loss of loss of loss. So, you know, psychologically, stick to one or two trades a day. And that's really, really going to do, like, I tell my friends all the time, if you can stick to one or two trades for like two months straight, all this psychology thing, all this trading discipline thing, it's all gonna change for you. I would say maybe, you know, this concerns with trading. When you're trading, how do you increase your capital? So this ties on, with the first question we had, like, you know, one to two trades a day. So if, let's say, for example, you got a $1,000 account, right? You got a $1,000 account, you've gone to, let's say you're through market fluidity, or let's say you're an amateur trader, and you know, like, I'm gonna focus on one or two trades a day. If you're focusing on one or two trades a day, you got a $1,000 account, you know, if you're really focusing on one or two trades a day, I've said this like 50 times, right? Slowly, what you're gonna see is maybe by the second month or the third month, that's $1,000, is up to like 1500 you know 1600 1700 nothing nothing major but percentage wise you're getting 60 percent return over two months and that's crazy because if you if you tell that to any joe Schmo out there who invested in the stock market for long term he's gonna sell 60 percent in two months that's unbelievable you know you're probably using too much leverage or whatever the hell's going on you know so that's what you're doing because that's what beauty because if you stick to one or two trades a day naturally you start to risk one percent of trade you know 1.5 percent of trade two percent of trade and then when that starts to compound you're like okay you know what i had a thousand dollar account two months ago it's sitting at eighteen hundred dollars now so maybe i've got eighty percent return you know close to a hundred percent but it's eighty percent return so maybe now i'm gonna put down more money in you know like i'm disciplined in a small account I, let's say I put 10,000 more, 5,000 more, and that let, let's run that up based on percentage. 1%, 2% on $1,000, 1% is what? $10, right? 1% on uh, 10,000 is $100. You know, and making $100 a day or risking 100 a day, 1% is, you know, over two months, a $10,000 account may go to 18,000. Perspective is the same. You know, people see me, you know, lose, let's say like 10 grand or 
40, 50 grand, that's like maybe 0.5 percent with a percentage. You know, so the best way to slowly, wisely grow it is understanding one or two trades a day and just give it time. You know, and then naturally you 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 can put more money in the account. So we got a really, really good question here. Now, I don't know what this person was thinking, but maybe it comes from a, you know, probably not so aware of what you need to do before you come to trading. And the question is, what is the best lot size on a $100,000 account? And I can guarantee you guys, I got a guy sitting right there, I can guarantee you guys, 80% from a fact, maybe that 100,000 man didn't even exist. Probably doesn't have a funded account for it. Right now, you could say it's a good question. You can also say it's a bad question, right? It's a bad question from the perspective of if you don't have a trading plan, if you don't even know what's the good amount of pips to secure a trade, why are you even taking that trade? That's like the same thing saying as, oh, okay, so I'm gonna get on the bus and the bus is gonna go left. So I'm gonna go left. When should I exit the bus? Right, you're on the bus going left. You don't even know when to exit the bus. You look around, you're like, hey man, when should I exit the bus? And the guy's gonna look at you all, well, well, Charlie, what's your plan to exit the bus? You're like, I don't know. I didn't have a plan, I need some help. So that's what happens when you enter a trade and you don't know when to exit the trade. Now, from another perspective, that could also be, you know, like if you're not technically aware of the market structure, right? If you're technically aware of the market structure where you should logically be exiting the trade, then maybe that's not even a question to begin with. You know, so what I can deduce from this is now, what I can anticipate is that probably you're someone who hasn't gone through the basic understanding about trading, basic understanding about risk management, or even market structure for that matter. So I would advise maybe go to babytips.com or go to like, you know, the uh, introductory videos we have on our playlist right there on my channel. And that's where you can learn how to read market structure for free, totally for free. You don't pay anything free video go look at that and when it comes towards risk that's totally up to you like if you got a hundred thousand dollar account let's be realistic let's say you don't have a funded account and you have a thousand dollar account right you got a thousand dollar account so now you got to figure out what risk are you going to use on that day or on that trade let's say if you're going to use one percent risk then maybe you're only going to afford to lose ten dollars you know and based on the trade you're going to take then you gotta calculate what lot size that's gonna be. Now I'm old school, so when I look at this, like, you know, thousand dollar account, I gotta risk 1%, what lot size I'm gonna use, I can do that math in my head. Because it's all mental, mental, mental mathematics. One lot, it equals to one tip, it equals to one dollar, in the traditional sense. So then you just gotta use math to see what lot size you're gonna use. So risk management comes from there. Sometimes what happens is that when price starts to move, you feel like, okay, I should enter right now. But something says, no, you gotta wait a little bit. You gotta wait for a little bit of a retracement and price moves up a little bit. And then you're like, okay, I should take a buy right now. But then price moves up a little bit. And before you know it, price just continues moving up and up and up and up and up. And then you're like, ah, oh, price has moved. Let me enter now. So when you enter a buy at the top, you get the retracement, you get a drawdown. And then you're like, oh, now we're screwed. So whenever you see price move, just know this, that your analysis was correct, your uh, bias was correct, maybe the entry was a little too late, or a little too early, or maybe the opportunity presented itself too late or too early, you know? So maybe that could be a lesson to say that, okay, if I was present at the time when this was moving, where could I have taken an entry? Because in the beginning, I used to think, oh, I missed a trade. Oh, what's gonna happen now? But a week later, that same move would come up. That same situation would come up. And then I would look at that and I'd say, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna enter right here. So once you see that enough, you naturally, your confidence goes up. You're like, okay, you know what? I've seen this five, six times and now I'm confident it's gonna go up. But I also know that there's a small probability it may not work. And I accept that probability. You accept that potential loss knowing that if you execute on the same situation 10 times, your probability of winning in that same trade is gonna be high because there's probability. So that's how you build confidence. I think this 
the stage of life where I'm in, in right now. I got family, I got two kids, they're still young. I think once you start a family, your whole goals change. Like everything changes. Because I remember, I remember when I was single, you know, I was like, you know, shooting the shit, doing whatever, um, partying here and there, like having jobs in odd places, not being home all the time. You know, I, I wanted like, you know, things which I would say, okay, you know what, I have it just to like show everyone, hey guys, look, I made it. You know, look, I, not even just like show off. Just to, like say like, look, I made it. I have this, I made it now. So I think not having money back then was a blessing as well because, because once I got money, you know, it came so fast. And I had a young family at that time. It got to my head. You know, it came too fast. I couldn't manage it. And it wasn't up to the point like, you know, where I was just spending money like, you know, like a, like a retard. No, it, it was like that. It was like I was putting more and more into trading. And the more you put money in trading, the more you lose, right? And the more comes in, more confident you get that this one time it's going to work. And it wouldn't work. You'd lose that in the market too. This one time, I remember this whole month, I lost around 6,000. I deposited 10,000. Lost for two days. I deposited 20,000 again. Lost that again. Deposited more. You know, so so those are things I went through. But then I think once I really started focusing on things I really want, what I really wanted was my bills to be paid. Deep down inside, that's all what I wanted. My bills to be paid. All the things about, oh, you know, I got a McLaren or I got a Corvette or I got a this and that. That's all fine. Right? You're going to get to that point. And trust me, when you're financially able to even acquire those things, they don't seem that attractive at that because you look at a Lamborghini you're like okay you know what four hundred thousand dollar car okay so should I get that car or should I pass that opportunity to buy two studio apartments to put them on rent in a place like Dubai place like Miami place like you know California whatever and you start to look at you and like okay you know what this makes sense I might buy these units because the, 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 the number one reason is like if something happens to me, my family has that put aside. You know, once your passive income starts to get in a little bit higher, then you could look at okay, now I'm gonna get this car, or I'm gonna get this boat, or whatever the case is. You know, so these are the things that should keep you focused on.